and he's got a hand in the air, hand in the air. I wonder, has he stalled his engine? He's uh, obviously wanting his mechanic to come over. What could that be? Uh, I'm not sure. It could be that the engine has actually cut, but I don't think so. I think he's... Uh, I he's on the inside of the front row and he's on pole position with his hands in the air and this could cause all kinds of problems at the start. Let's hope the other drivers have seen it. PJ Fallon's OK, the yellow flag is up, but the way they go is all right. Maybe it was a gear or something like that. But it's Fallon. Byrne has been left. Black is looking for a gap. Byrne is in second place. Up into third is Joey Greenan on the outside there. Black going through. Joey Greenan spins, or half spins, but it's Black up into third. And then... He's out in fourth. It looks like Chris Murphy. Chris Murphy uh, An in excellent fourth. start by PJ from the outside of the front row. The grid, a dream start. Tommy Byrne was in frantic trouble. We're not quite sure what it was, other than the fact that either his clutch was slipping or something like that. He may have overheated by doing too many warm-up starts, but uh, he's obviously very much in contention here now, and he's filling PJ's mirrors very, very full indeed. But um, a dream start by PJ, and looking very comfortable up in front, and let's hope he can just concentrate on what he's actually doing, and not worry about Tommy Byrne, who's going to give him a pretty hard time. I think we're in for a good motor race. Well, Tommy Byrne was expected to probably streak away at the start. This makes it far more exciting. Tommy Byrne with some kind of problem there in his car, but now going very strongly indeed. The second black is third, Murphy is fourth. That's Greenan coming through into fourth place. And then the rest of the field stringing through. So around, around Shell for the second time, and it's still PJ Fallon being hounded persistently now by Tommy Byrne, who's really making some very strenuous efforts to get by. And I, I really think, here we go, coming into Duckham's on the outside, wrong line perhaps, but um, yes, well fend off by PJ. And uh, this could be good because you will see that the third man, Arnie Black, is actually coming into the picture now. Gives Arnie an opportunity to close up maybe a little bit here as the two crawl all over each other. But PJ will be more content almost looking in his mirrors than he's looking at the, at the road ahead. He will be very well aware that Tommy Byrne is in a very strong second place at the moment. Tommy Byrne second then, black third. Up the come for the second time, up the fourth straight, down through the box, into about the 30 mile an hour hairpin. Ryan Dunlop swinging it around as they come out. And Greenan now, a very strong fourth position there. And there goes Byrne on the outside. And Byrne on the outside, both of them together coming into Shell. Yes, and Byrne outdices him. Yes, no, no, it's anybody's corner. And PJ Fallon's nose corner has just temporarily been mislaid. So Byrne we have in the lead. A good piece of driving by Tommy Byrne, and he pulls out an immediate gap, which is the right thing to do while he's given the, the other driver the pressure, and I think you will see that Tommy Byrne will now pull away just ever so slightly at the moment. Now, this is an extraordinary situation, because PJ, exactly the same thing happened to him a fortnight ago when the nose cone of his car, when he was leaving at Phoenix Park, and what happened is the nose cone went down like that, and it causes the car to overheat. And they may well indeed black flag this car and bring it in because that cone being uh, loose like that could be a danger to following traffic. Yes, it could be a danger. Nevertheless, you have the marshals there to warn the drivers behind when the cone does come off that, uh, in actual fact, there is a hazard there. But uh, I think PJ would be sensible. He's got mm, really very little to, to lose at this stage other than, other than the race, but he, he's going to cause himself a lot of headache if, if he overheats this engine, which I do believe he's had to rebuild since... Phoenix Chris Murphy and uh, Dennis McGall and another car involved and they're tied together. That's Chris Murphy there in the Perno sponsored car tied together to Dennis McGall's Delta. They cannot separate the cars. Chris Murphy is staying in the car. He obviously wants to go on motor racing. It's a very nasty situation there. There's Tommy Byrne, number one then. Coming down now to complete his fourth lap of this 20-lap Benson and Hedges Super 4 2000. Arnie Black trying desperately, and in fact the nose has come off. PJ's car Black on the outside, PJ on the inside as they come down into Shell for second place. That's the leader. That's the leader, Tommy Byrne. But who's got him in second? Well, it's anybody's race for second place at this stage, and really I haven't written on it. It's, racing is a funny game, and really anyone could still win it. But uh, I think, quite honestly, that Tommy is in a pretty much unassailable situation, but I'm glad for PJ's sake that the nose cone has actually fallen off. So The other car we saw on the pit star was Colin Lees, another very much a front runner. He had been well up at the end of the second half. He was up into sixth place, so Colin Lees also had him. Black still trying to get past for second place. Down the inside, down the outside. This is getting very very aggressive. 
Yes, it's good stuff. It's really good to watch from here. And um, this is what motor racing is all about. And I can assure you that this sort of situation has been going on all season long at Mondello. I believe they've had their best ever season. And this is the signs of it, really. Good, close, aggressive driving to keep the crowds on their toes. And, and this is what motor racing is all about. Of course, PJ is totally entitled to stay there, but in actual fact, what he's doing is holding up Black, who, is, who would have, might have had a chance to get after Byrne. We've just heard that Tommy Byrne has equaled the lap record with a time of 58.8. So Tommy Byrne equaled the lap record. Tommy Byrne, who leads? And there he is. Well, Tommy, in actual fact, um, will obviously be given clear and accurate uh, positions from his pit crew and he will see that he's doing the times that have been told to us here and also that the gap between him and the next person and I'd be, I'd be surprised if Tommy gets a new lap record here because he's no real incentive to get up and go any quicker as I said before it's um, the man who wins in the slowest possible time is the winner uh, so therefore Tommy has really no need to stick his neck out he just has to command the race from the front end and, and do a good professional job and make sure that he retains his lead well, something has got to give in this battle for second place. Arnie trying one side and then the other. Obviously a lot quicker than PJ's car, which is aerodynamically, of course, not functional now without the nose in the car. But uh, PJ not leaving any gap for the Lisbon driver to get through. A tremendous dice between the two exactly similar Crosleys, similar apart from the fact that PJ has lost his nose cone. It's... It, it's it's good to know also that uh, just one second for, for Arnie Black as far as that he has won the Irish Championship this year and has been confirmed with that. So, you know, he's not going to be holding back with regard to uh, championship points or anything. So it's do or die here. It's an enormous gap if it first, second Black's in a much better position this time. He must be quicker in a straight line. PJ lets him through, and that's the end of the battle for second place. Now, can Black possibly catch Tommy Byrne? A pretty tall order. The gap, however, between first and second, between Tommy Byrne and Arnie Black, is widening all the time, and there is the leader. Tommy Byrne, then. Yes, so a round shell for the... Uh the eighth time, ninth time, in fact, and um, he has a, an absolutely amazing lead, and particularly well in front of Arnie Black here, who is pulling away from PJ, but I think that's purely only for the reason of PJ's own problems, and honestly, it it's, doesn't look as if Arnie here is making any inroads on the, on the big lead that, that Tommy has. Lonnie Black, the company director from the north of Ireland, has had this last season sponsorship for the second season now, and uh, indeed he's given them championships on every occasion he's had it. Uh, so he's been the top man in Irish Formula 4 in 2000, but only just. PJ giving him very close battles indeed, and a very close battle for the championship this year. There's Tommy Byrne then, coming out of Dunlop. Now he's coming down to complete 12 laps. There's second, Arnie Black. PJ Fallon in third place, John Gunning fourth. In fifth, we have Mark Longmore. In sixth, was David Sutherland. And then in seventh place, the leader for so many laps of the qualifying heat, number 33, Morris Dunn. There's John Gunning in fourth place, an excellent drive. Uh, and generally races Formula Ford 1600 here in Mandela, has hired the car for the weekend, and obviously very pleased uh, with the way things are going. In fourth place, then, John Gunning. Tommy Bryan, then. Coming down through the S's. On his uh, having completed 19 laps, sorry, going on to his 20th lap as he comes now up to Dunlop. Tommy Byrne then. And it looks like that with one more lap to go, he's going to there is the checker flag, in fact. The checker flag for Tommy Byrne. So well done, Tommy Byrne. Uh, an excellent race. He, he seemed to have a problem on pole position when he lined up. I I think it could have possibly been where he overheated the clutch. He, he, he did at least two or three starts. And Second Arnie Black, there is P.J. Fallon, as close as ever. That's Joey Green, and he's out of the running. It's going to be John Gunning in fourth place. And then Martin Longmore in fifth. There's John Gunning taking fourth place. In fifth place is uh, number four, Longmore, then Sutherland. And then we have Morris Dunn coming through in sixth. So Tommy Byrne waving to the crowd. Everybody at home in Dundalk will be very pleased with this, obviously. Um, Tommy has his own fan club up, up in Dundalk, which he, he looks after very well.
And so he adds Mandela to the list of those magic names like Nürburgring, Spa, Zolder, and of course Donington. Those were the European championship rounds he won this year. But he'll be no less pleased with this particular round because there was plenty of uh, opposition here today. Tommy Byrne then, absolutely delighted, taking the Benson and Hedges Super Ford 2020 laps. And out he comes, out of the car. He had a problem on the start line once he sorted that out and got past PJ in a fairly forceful yet uh, quite legal move. Days, and I'm 